So let's pretend we just had a recap of what scene C4 is, why people don't like it, and why it's not considered a part of the canon, and just skip straight to the good stuff. If I were to rewrite the final chapter of the Tiberium Universe storyline, how would it go? Firstly, let's go over where we left off. The Skrin invasion of Earth was driven back by GDI, following the destruction of a relay node in Italy. Skrin command ships escaped through Threshold 19 to report loss of harvesting operations to Overlord. Mission was aborted. Prepare a full invasion force. Earth will fall. The one remaining Threshold is under Nod control. The tower is impervious to attack and is believed to be inert by GDI, but Kane intends to use the gateway within to achieve ascension. We don't know what ascension is, and perhaps it's better that we don't, but it's been Kane's goal for the longest time. He needed a threshold, hence why he summoned the Skrin to Earth. He needed the Tacitus, an alien data matrix that contains information on Tiberium and the Skrin. And finally, Kane needed an interface between the two. This is the purpose behind Legion. I did a video on Cabal and Legion recently, I'll be skimming over some of the details here, but the backstory of Cabal is critical, check that out if you want the full story. In the final act of Kane's Wrath, Legion reawakens in 2052, repaired using appropriated Skrin tech. Legion activates and commands the Mark of Kane, an underground army of cyborgs built too late for the Second Tiberium War, and which have lain in waiting ever since. Using this army, Legion recaptures the now dangerously unstable Tacitus. Kane has everything he needs to achieve ascension. So where do we go from there? Now, I'm no writer, this isn't my field, I don't expect this to be particularly competent or in-depth, so this is just a proposal for what I think the fans might like to see. I'm not particularly planning this with a game in mind. In game dev, you tend to fit the narrative around the gameplay and not the other way around, so don't take this as too realistic a proposal. The goal is to create a story for one final CNC game following Kane's Wrath to address the storylines of the previous games. To that end, we're going to completely ignore CNC4 and its motion comic, I'm only considering these games as canon, and instead take some inspiration from Westwood's original CNC3 Incursion. One of the key features of the planned Incursion game would have been the inclusion, over the course of two expansions, of five playable factions. Like I say, this isn't a realistic dev proposal since that would be quite the undertaking but this is what I would have liked to see. Point 1. The Foiled Ascension We pick up immediately where Kane's Wrath left off, with Legion interfacing with the Tacitus. Here's the thing though, Legion was based on both scraps from the Tacitus and on Cabal. The earlier constructs went mad with Megalomania following the Second Tiberium War, caused by the mortally wounded Kane being placed in one of the suspension tubes and his mind integrated into Cabal's network. During the Firestorm Crisis, Cabal used the weakened mind of Kane as a processor, and by the end, their two consciousnesses had almost melded as one. With Cabal defeated, Kane was able to overpower the AI and regain control, but a fragment of Cabal survived within Kane. This may be how the ghost of Cabal still lives on in Legion. Now, Cabal was very familiar with the Tacitus, having assisted Tratos in its translation, and was at one point the only being on the planet able to understand it. I wonder if, during the latter half of Firestorm, he was able to write some data to it. 2052. Legion interfaces with the Tacitus reuniting it with the fragments of Cabal for the first time in 20 years. In Kane's hour of victory, Cabal reawakens and takes control. Cabal still commands the Marked of Kane and makes his escape with a volatile Tacitus. Cabal at first still retains his goal of the assimilation and eradication of humanity, but now that he is separated from Kane, slowly begins to revert and Legion and Cabal begin to question who and what they are. 
What are their goals? What do they want? What is the point? I play this up as a rogue AI that sees the world through a very different lens. An unpredictable construct that is trying to rewrite its own brain. This is Cain at his most desperate, so close to ascension. It's also his most personal betrayal, as a fragment of Cabal still resides within his own psyche, and perhaps a shard of Cain also lives within Cabal. I would play up this link slightly, since one of the possible plans of Westwood was that a sort of Cabal-Cain hybrid could have taken over Cain's role as a series villain. Cain now needs to bring Legion back under control, before the Tacitus is lost forever, and before the return of the visitors he had manipulated. It'd be interesting to see how this would unfold, particularly when the Skrin arrive. The Skrin would see Cabal as an enormous threat, and Cabal's cyborgs could be instrumental in countering the aliens. Since I consider Cabal and Legion to be two separate entities, I like to see Cabal overpower, subsume, and by all rights, kill Legion. This who would have been Kane's greatest creation, forcing Kane to focus on Cabal personally, lest the final part of his key to ascension be lost. Point 2. The Skrin Incursion of Earth This time they're not sending routine harvesting, they're sending their primary fleet. This is now a matter of revenge for their humiliation. Overlord orders the eradication of GDI and the capture of the anomaly logged during the first invasion. Blast you. This beam already exists in the data caller. Genetic derivations are unknown. Rather than deploying a surface relay node to supply Skrin forces with Tiberium radiation, the relay node will instead be housed on Overlord's command ship kept in the Earth's orbit to provide for all surface forces, and so would require either the Ion Cannon or perhaps a Nod Nuke to destroy, depending on how we play the final act. Since Threshold Construction received such strong resistance last time, with 18 of the 19 towers being destroyed, Tiberium Collection will be limited to regular surface harvesting, with all Tiberium sent direct to the Relay Node to fuel the Skrin Armada. Exact revenge on GDI. Acquire and study the anomaly to learn how the planet was so well prepared last time. Then mine the planet for all it is worth. Point 3. The Return of the Forgotten. The Tiberium tribes of Earth have now been in self-imposed exile in Red Zones for 15 years. They don't trust humans. Nod experimented on mutants, and GDI failed to protect Umagon and Tratos. However, the Earth is their planet too. I doubt the Forgotten sat idly by during the first invasion, even though we never saw them, and they're going to have prepared for the second wave. Between Tratos' visions and the strange abilities of Mortimer, Westwood was setting up the Forgotten as slowly developing some form of psionic prowess, which was to be key in fighting the Skrin in the cancelled scene C3. We're doing that. The Forgotten and GDI form a loose alliance as a Skrin arrive, with the Forgotten better able to fend off Skrin attacks due to their Tiberium-based physiology. The Skrin thrive in Tiberium zones, but those zones belong to the Forgotten. However, GDI actions over the past two decades of reclaiming these Tiberium Zones that the Forgotten require to live is a major point of consternation between the two factions. The Forgotten need GDI to cease Red Zone reclamation efforts, and GDI's recent reliance on Harmonic Resonance tech is of major concern to the Forgotten. So this gives us the five factions as originally planned for Westwood CNC3 incursion. GDI will be an amalgam of their past tech. With the upcoming threat of a second invasion, they'll have invested more funds into their strongest weaponry rather than the more lax GDI of Tib Wars. We're talking the return of Titans, the resurrection of the sonic disruptors due to their efficacy against the Skrin, and all the good stuff GDI is known for, mixing wheeled and tracked vehicles with their Walker tech. We'll keep the cheaper Mammoth Mark III as the heavy tank with the classic twin cannons and Tusk missiles, but we're ditching the Marv in favour of the original Mammoth Mark II. Not an upgraded Mark II, the original. 
It's GDI's ultimate unit, and they've got to have a few sitting around somewhere. The Zone Trooper Heavy Infantry makes sense to keep, though maybe mix their design a little with the Wolverines or Exo Power Suit to make them a little less Starcrafty. Either that or stick with the better designed Zone Raiders. Finally, we're keeping the Commando, though perhaps we need to see more of his guns. For VA, give Frank a ring. For GDI's logo, I'd be happy to continue using the Tib War 3 variant. It invokes the original better than Tib War 2's version, and it looks clean, modern, and iconic. This is a great emblem. And while I won't be bringing up cast much, I reckon that for this final entry, GDI's science division needs to be headed by Sidney Mobius. We started with a Mobius, let's bring it full circle, and inside out. Nod will likewise be a collection of their greatest hits from all three wars, directed by Kane himself from perhaps Cairo. With the destruction of Temple Prime, Nod always seems to end up back in Cairo, a location that according to Renegade, it's where the Brotherhood started. With Nod's diminished state and the defection of Legion, Nod has lost their Tibson era cyborgs, the Marks of Kane, and their walkers like the Avatar and instead will rely on their classic tools. Hit-and-run buggies and bikes, light tanks like the Scorpion or maybe even their old Renegade design, flame tanks, and stealth tanks. Perhaps also the mobile stealth generator, though I might skip the subterranean vehicles since they're not so fun to play against. We'll keep the Venom aircraft from the Third War since Nod kind of needs a rotorless helicopter. That, that bug kind of got quite iconic, didn't it? and bring back the Skrin-inspired Banshee, since by this point Nod would have more alien tech to reverse engineer. While Nod still uses ballistics and explosives like GDI, they also implement their own laser turrets alongside chemical and flame weapons. Nod's light infantry should also have that sharp Tibson era design, and we need to have the Chem Warriors as Nod's elite infantry, perhaps even filling the role of Nod's commando though allowing multiple chem warriors to be trained at a time. For Nod's emblem, I'd revert back to the original design with the straight edges. The Tib War 3 logo was pretty cool with the weird spikes, but the older version is more iconic and has more gravitas with its simplicity. Actually, I'm not a fan of this render anymore, let's freshen it up. There we go. The Skrin forces are under the control of Overlord, and this time it's the full armada. I actually don't have any complaints with a style of unit seen in Tib Wars, so more of the same really. Though it could be cool to see some of the concept art from the Tiberium FPS join the roster. Would be really cool though to see them using ships in the style of the one Nod built before Tib Sun. One major thing though is the units need their own voice lines rather than just making noises. <laughs> Cabal's faction will be a mix of Nod's Firestorm-era designs, their Walker tech, and the Marked of Cain from Cain's Wrath, commanded by the awakened Cabal within Legion, current holder of the Tacitus. Most of the structures should be classic Tib War II designs, with the Cabal Obelisk and Obelisk of Darkness as base defences. The infantry will be composed entirely of cyborgs, with the Awakened and Enlightened having a more steampunk and less toyish design, and the classic Cyborg Commando as the Elite Infantry. Vehicles will be a mix of walkers, like the Cyborg Reaper and Avatar War Mech, with various remote control vehicles and drones, including the Mobile Repair Vehicle, and maybe even something like the Harkonnen Buzzsaw, though these will be kept to a minimum. Cabal is about cyborgs, mechanized biological organisms, brains hooked up to mainframes, not robots. The Redeemer will be taken from Nod, but we won't see it in its present form. Instead, it'll play a role similar to the Allied Battle Fortress. Garrison the Redeemer with infantry of any faction to sacrifice it and add its weaponry to the Redeemer's arsenal, up to four permanent slots. The reason we're downgrading it a little to the role of a heavy assault vehicle is because of Cabal's true epic unit, the return of the Core Defender. Generally for weaponry, we'd see ballistics, Cabal's blue lasers, pulse guns and rail guns, perhaps also the Volt Gun from Renegade and other electric discharge weapons, though keeping them distinct from Tesla tech. 
There are a few pieces of concept art for Incursion, they're intentionally rather out there in terms of design, but I'd mention in particular the Cabal Swarmling, which has an interestingly vicious design, and uh, the Robo T-Rex. Maybe it's a bit silly, but it's worth raising the callback to Fun Park. Cabal has never had a faction emblem. We could just reuse the Marks of Cain logo, but while it's characterful, I don't think that represents Cabal particularly well. There is this icon from the cancelled CNC3 incursion, but while it gets attributed to Cabal, I don't think it actually is. The icon comes from this concept art, which by the way is the inspiration for my EVA UI in the lore vids. Incursion was set to have Cabal as a faction, but not until the expansions. The third faction in the base game would have been the Skrin. Now compare this icon, which is reminiscent of a Roman-esque helmet, to the concept art of the Skrin from the same game. I reckon this icon had nothing to do with Cabal, and is in fact an early Skrin emblem instead. So what should we use? It needs to be something that relates to Cabal in some way, and just using his face is a bit naff. So after discussing this with Alex06, here's our proposal. In Firestorm, we briefly see this animation of several triangular pyramids around a cube, representing Cabal's core, and then again when Cabal boots up. General Plus, stylized like this, it forms an upside-down triangle, showing Cabal's defection from Nod. This is Alex 06's fantastic rendition of the design, and I think this works really rather well. Listen to the sounds of your own extinction. The Forgotten would be a really cool mix of old and new. The mutants are nomads, they don't have the resources GDI and Nod have, and so they scavenge a lot of their strongest tech from old battlefields claimed by Tiberium. We're talking the classic Mammoth Mark I. We're talking rotor helicopters rather than VTOL jets, and the MLRS either from Tib War 1 or 2. And while I don't think we should lean too hard into the link, how about phase transport? Or something evoking the mobile gap gen? Something to keep the mutants hidden on the move. The Forgotten's vehicles will be mostly older tech, but they're not scrap dealers. They are scientific minded people and they've been preparing for this war for a long time. We're not taking the route of scrap buses and tractors as seen in alliances. It's their infantry that sets them apart, with a mix of mutant soldiers and the more hulking mutant marauders wielding heavy weapons, and TIB-based weapons such as the Tiberium Auto Rifle and the Flechette Gun. The mutant hijacker returns, ideally with the funky music as he speaks. Hawa. Borrowing from the CNC3 mod The Forgotten, I love the idea of mutants who tame Tiberium lifeforms. Rather than commanding fiends or floaters directly, you instead command the tamer, and if the tamer is killed, the fiends are still friendly but cannot be commanded. Perhaps we could see a few other new Tiberium-based fauna assisting The Forgotten. Might I also suggest the Picadons from Lands of Law 3? You could have Tiberium flora for base defences, really big up the alien concept art from Tib Sun by growing structures that emit Tiberium gases or liquids, fire shards or otherwise attack. The CNC3 mods also had the really neat idea of a Veinhole monster superweapon. It would be cool also to have a support infantry with Mortimer-style psionic powers, perhaps to summon ion storms like Scrintec, or maybe even summon Visceroids. So this faction's artillery units would be infantry rather than a vehicle. Plus, since they're Tiberium based, the Forgotten could also have infantry for harvesting, a little like Yuri's Slave Miner, since they wouldn't need the shielding of harvesters. And of course, the Commando is the Ghost Stalker, with the extremely powerful railgun. The Forgotten already have a faction logo, though that comes from the Tiberium Alliance's spin-off. It's based on the Tiberium Hazard emblem from Tib Wars, but the hexagons are smaller and the lines in between are more bold. I much prefer the version we see in Tib Wars. I'd either use the Tiberium sign with these proportions, or perhaps the edited version from the Tiberium FPS key art, though this one only really works in 3D and is less versatile. I did find this variant by a fan though, so this is what it could look like. So. These are our five factions. 
The GDI and Nod campaigns would take place in the same continuity, same as in Firestorm and Tib Wars. By the end of the campaigns, the Skrin will be driven back, their fleet destroyed, and Overlord killed by the destruction of the Orbital Relay Node, probably with the Ion Cannon, though the use of other super weapons will be required to open up the opportunity. Or maybe present the option of different endings depending on which you use. Would be cool if, in the final mission, GDI needs to either capture a Temple of Nod, or Kane has to acquiesce to assist in order to stop the Skrin from preventing his ascension. GDI and Nod actually working together against their common foe. Nod and Cabal will be forced into the war as well, as GDI and the Skrin learn of Cabal's possession of the Tacitus. Both the Forgotten and Cabal's forces would be key in fending off the Skrin, as they would be expecting the carbon-based human forces relied upon during the first wave, and having learned from how both GDI and Nod fought. Over the course of the Nod campaign, Kane would bring Cabal back under his control, but only once the Skrin are destroyed would he be able to activate the Threshold and finally ascend. This leaves GDI to pick up the pieces, to share the Earth with the Forgotten, ending with GDI looking to the stars. I'm not sure about a Cabal or Forgotten campaign, I get that we're not taking this too seriously in terms of actual game dev, but five campaigns is still pretty massive. Maybe these will work better as smaller campaigns to show these factions' perspectives in possible expansions. The Skrin campaign, however, would follow a different path. In the same vein as the Nod campaigns from Tib Dawn and Tib Sun, this story instead follows the incursion where the Skrin win. The destruction of GDI, the forced integration of the Forgotten into the Skrin, think the Ungoy from Halo, the dismantling of Cabal, and the capture of Kane, whisked away to the i hub for vivisection. This would be the timeline of absolute Skrin victory, and the fall of Earth. Though, wouldn't it be cool if we had a twist, a bit like the Firestorm Nod ending? The final cutscene, our planet is mined hollow. Overlord congratulates the player on their work, and mankind has fallen. But then, Overlord's screen goes dark. Warning messages roll on the display, the lights in the Skrin forces go out, they start falling towards the planet. And then... <laughs> Like I say, this is pretty much daydreaming. I don't expect there'll be any more games, and all this is just, wouldn't it be cool if, rather than a feasible idea for actual game development. Anyway, outros are hard. My name is Stefan. Thank you very much for watching.